Namaste. Today I have some very special guests. To my right is Nikunj Trivedi, the Namaste. chairman of Hindu Students Council. To my left is Parth Parihar, the general secretary of Hindu Students Council. The HSC has about 50 chapters across North American universities. They are the apex body, the most important voice for young Hindus in this country and in Canada. I've known them for a couple of decades. I have been aligned with them for a long time. We do a lot of projects together. Nikund in particular, Nikunj in particular, we've gone back for a couple of decades yeah, now. Exactly. So today we are going to discuss the CNN documentary, which many Hindus find insulting, uh, which is supposed to be on uh, Hinduism and uh, uh, Varanasi, but turns out to be all kinds of other things, hidden agendas. So uh, what we decided is, uh, HSC has selected four or five clips uh, out of this. We will show you each clip followed by some discussion mm -hmm. in order that you know what we are talking about. And by the end of this uh, interaction with the CNN document, you will have a good idea of what the whole uh, issue is about. So uh, I request we let's put on the first uh, first clip. I came to Varanasi, India to do a show about Hinduism. Okay. 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 So what do you think of that? What does that tell you? So uh, this clip is important because what it shows is that Reza Aslan came to Varanasi specifically to do a show on Hinduism and then it continues, it says reincarnation, karma and then a very small sect called the Aghoris. So he claims in his uh, defense that he, this show is not about Hinduism, it's only about the Aghoris. However, it's very clear from this clip that it is a show about Hinduism. So the important point being this is how he introduces. Exactly. The introduction to the show claims that he's going to give you uh, something about Hinduism. So it's good, supposedly good classroom material That's to correct. show in schools uh, or to the general public who know nothing else about Hinduism. That's because correct. he's come to India to do a show on Hinduism. Now, uh, the next clip will pr tell us what exactly he is going to show us. So That's let's right. hear, see the next clip, please. In Hinduism, there is a religiously defined social construct that essentially categorizes everyone in Indian society. This is called the caste system. But there is a sect of Hinduism called the Aghori, which, while technically 500 years old, is now trying to upend the caste system embedded in Hindu spirituality. In doing so, they are challenging the very fabric of Indian society. Hindus believe in reincarnation, the idea that after death we are reborn again and again. Each rebirth is determined by the karma that you accumulate from your previous life. Karma can be based on things like your words, thoughts, or deeds. But it can also be affected by Hindu notions of purity and pollution. If I achieve enough good karma, then my next birth will be higher than this one until finally I achieve liberation, moksha, from the cycle of birth and rebirth. But karma can work the other way too. And if I start accumulating bad karma, then I will have to pay the consequences of that in the next life. There's no such thing as hell in Hinduism, but there is something that's almost as bad. I could be reborn as an untouchable. The untouchables, also known as the Dalit, occupy the lowest level in India's caste system. The Brahmin are at the very top, the untouchables at the very bottom. Okay, so what do you think of that? So again, uh, first we talked about that this is not a show of Hinduism, which we showed that it is actually a show of Hinduism, and then he goes into this idea that he also defends that the caste system is religiously sanctioned. It's actually what Hinduism really is. And in the next 30 seconds to a minute, 
he still goes into the definition of karma, he goes into reincarnation. However, all of that is looked through only one lens, the lens of the caste system. So as if karma boils down to a simple philosophy that because of karma you're in caste. Karma's uh, you know, metaphysical or other types of deep philosophical thoughts are not even brought up. Same thing with reincarnation. He goes into reincarnation saying, well, it's only as it applies to caste. So everything that he's talking about is caste, caste, and caste only. So, Parth, what's your view? So I also think this clip is very important because it basically gives the one-minute lowdown of how he's going to frame the Aghoris within Hinduism. So he basically frames the Aghori, the Aghora Sampradaya in this, in this clip as the unique tradition within Hinduism that is sort of combating the caste system. He also calls caste system, as Nikunj was alluding to, he uses the phrase spiritually embedded within Hindu spirituality itself. So I see a couple of points. One is uh, he frames the whole show as I'm teaching you Hinduism. Then he zooms in on, on caste as sort of the quintessential quality and characteristic of Hinduism, not its uh, other metaphysics and its bhakti and all the other things it is about, uh, not all the things that the West is appropriating from it, That's and misappropriating from it, as, uh, including yoga and yoga. stuff like that, uh, but the caste system. And then he frames, zooms in further and frames the Aghoris as people who are fighting the caste system. So Hinduism is bad because of untouchability. Aghoras are the voice that are going to fight it. So now we, the Christians, the Judeo Christian, the Westerners, the secularists, have a choice between this horrible Hinduism and the Aghoris. So let's get to know more about the Aghoris. That's, That's sort exactly. of how, how he's exactly. framing it. Exactly. Yeah. So, okay. So let's, uh, let's uh, watch the next clip, please. In India, it's good to be a Brahmin. They are at the top of the caste system, the closest to liberation, living what could be their final life on earth. What role does karma play in this attempt at liberation? In the previous birth, whatever you have done, it has imprinted in your mind. You're unconscious. And so karma accumulates and helps you on the path up in life after life, birth after birth, until you finally achieve liberation. Of course, of course. So if you are born in a lower caste, how do you achieve karma? How do you achieve liberation? Look, the persons who are living on this earth, they are not equal. They are not equal. Okay, so what do you think of that? So the beginning of this clip is particularly problematic. He says that Brahmins are the ones who are sort of closest to liberation, closest to moksha. And within the Hindu tradition, of course, we know that moksha is available to everyone regardless of their birth. Um, he then, I think the end of the clip is also particularly problematic because he cuts off the sadhu when he's saying not everyone is equal. We don't know what he was going to say after that. You know, equality has a lot of different parameters. You could be saying, you know, we don't all have the same abilities in life. We don't all have the same qualities. And not everybody's equal in the United States. I mean, yes. I'm not able to do what Donald Trump can do. Exactly. Um, Correct. So, you know. Yeah, no, so from the equality perspective, this is an excellent point that Par brings up because now what you're saying is first, he talked about the caste system, I was part of the Hindu tradition or Hinduism, right? That's what caste system is. Then now he's getting a religiously sanctioned uh, voice. So he's bringing in a Swamiji that says, well, not everyone is equal and he cuts him off. To, to corroborate what he earlier said, that look, this is sanctioned by Hinduism. Here's a, here's a Swamiji who's sitting here and actually sanctioning, saying not everyone is equal. And then he cuts them off right there. So, you know, unless you are really experienced in this Kurukshetra of how these things work, and how there is subtle subtext and politics and agendas and how it's all done, you as a naive person, including a devout Hindu, would say, hey, you know, he's just telling you normal things. The point is that he's asking leading questions. He's spent yes. weeks and months uh, with large amount of budget to prepare for this. So what questions he'll ask are designed to get the answer he wants. And, he, and you know, for a 45 minute final thing, you shoot 20, 30 hours of footage typically, and yeah. then you clip out of it what fits your needs. So he's zooming in towards problematizing caste, particularly exactly. as the quintessential characteristic of Hinduism. That's wonderful. So should we go to the... What you and and yeah, I, I want to make a, one more point. Is that now, we think about a person's attention time span. Yeah. You know, typically a person doesn't watch too much. Uh, their attention time span has gone in 7 to 10 minutes in the first one. So now, so far, what have you learned in this, these few clips? Uh, I'm going to talk about Hinduism. Hinduism is nothing but caste system. And there are four words that come out besides Hinduism. Karma, reincarnation, moksha, 
and Dalit are four words that a typical American audience knows about Hindus. The misconceptions that Hinduism is all a bunch of caste, cows and curries as you say. And I'd like to add a fourth one, cannibalism. So Hinduism equals caste, cows, curry and cannibalism. And that's what you're starting to see in the first uh, few uh, minutes of this entire documentary. So now you already developed a mindset about what the documentary is going to be. Yeah, I just want to point out that for many weeks, CNN was aggressively advertising this show called Believers. Yes. And in the headlines was cannibals. Right. The word cannibals was in their advertising all the time. So, you know, this, sens this is sensational. Uh, he's going to tell you about amazing...